going on guys? It's Brian, the Pittsburgh Comic Expert, coming at you with another haul. Uh, so last night I went out to Half Price Books in Monroeville, Pennsylvania, for those of you who are local. And uh, I had, I don't know, two bags of graphic novels that I'd read and had no interest to keep, as well as some random items and uh, two bags of DVDs that had been I hadn't actually watched since I moved into my home eight years ago. <laughs> so I... Uh, you know, they, uh, I've been reading some things lately on how to improve the quality of life, and one of those is to get rid of trivial things. Um, comics aside, uh, you know, mainly if it's a movie that you own and you haven't watched it in a year, I think it's time to let somebody else watch it. That's kind of the mentality I've been trying to adopt, except uh, it's with, I've had my movies. I used to be a DVD hoarder, so instead of being like a comic collector and I've got, you know, several short boxes and a couple long boxes, I was a DVD collector and I inventoried my entire DVD collection. It was such a, a pain to keep track of that. And then one day I lost it. My hard drive crashed, all the files became corrupted, and I lost it and I wasn't smart enough back then in, you know, 2000 to uh, have uh, made a backup. So I just didn't bother anymore. So um, anyway, I've been going through a lot of those DVDs I used to collect because much like how there's a new comic day, there's also a new DVD day, and that's usually Tuesdays. And uh, I was going to the store and buying all these new releases and never watching them and just putting them on the shelf. And then eventually I figured, oh, I'll just buy it and I'll watch it later. So there's a little bit of backstory about me. Anyway. I went through, I uh, found more movies that I don't care to keep that aren't really cult classics that my neither my wife nor myself would have any interest in watching again and got rid of them. As a result, I bought some comics and I came home with a little bit of cash. So let's get started. Uh, I've been looking for the goon number one from Dark Horse for quite some time and uh, I never found it. I, it's hard to find in the wild, but I did see this reprint and I, I, it's not even, it's worth like the paper it's printed on or less. But I just wanted to read the story, and, uh, you know, I saw this for a buck in the spindle at Half Price Books, so I picked it up. It's got some issues on the spine right along here, but whatever. It'll be a good placeholder if I ever find the original. Picked up one for Junior, uh, Brave and the Bold, B Batman Brave and the Bold, Volume 2 for DC Kids. Um, that book's not worth a lot. I mean, they have a sticker on it for two bucks. Uh, Comic Book Realm has it for three. It's pretty high grade. Uh, I picked it up for them because these kids' books are low print, and they're usually uh, hard to find. You know, the comic shops don't order a lot of them because now most of their patrons are adults instead of kids, and they don't get a lot of kids' books. So I picked this up for Junior's uh, stash, and uh, I have a Teen Titans Go number one from the second volume, and that book is selling on eBay for $40. So I have that one put aside for him, too. Uh, he picked up a couple other books uh, recently because he was real good at school. So he ended up getting, I don't know if I showed these yet, but he got the Scooby-Doo team up number 18 with all the superhero dogs. And then he grabbed this one off the shelf, too, this Young Justice. I thought that was pretty a pretty cool uh, Raj al Ghul cover. He'll probably go through those on his haul as well. Next time he does a video. Alright, here's some trade bait for everybody. Got a Danger Girl uh, volume, I think it's volume one, uh, from Image, Cliffhanger slash Wildstorm. I don't know who all owned the damn licensing. But that's a J. Scott Campbell cover. Uh, I don't collect JSC. I think uh, while he does know how to draw beautiful women, they all look the same to me. So uh, anybody is looking for Danger Girl, I've never collected her. I'm, I don't collect covers just because they've got hot chicks on them. So if anybody wants uh, this book, uh, it is available for trade, and let me know. All right, here's a series I am trying to collect. And I'm upset because I had the Fantagraphics number one and two, and I sold them on eBay. And Merc with a Mouth got, he's been talking about Usagi Jimbo and... Uh, I'm sitting there kicking myself in the ass thinking, why the hell did I sell those to? But, and it was first print as well. So now I've got to go out and find it again. Uh, in the meantime, I've been trying to pick up the volume two. That's from Mirage. Uh, volume one was Fantagraphics, I believe. And then now I think the current title is running under Dark Horse. I have no interest in collecting those. I just want to get the Mirage, which I think is only like 20 issues at the most. 
And uh, the artwork is really nice on these Mirage ones, especially on the covers. And uh, I wanted to go back and grab the Fantagraphics ones too. Now the first appearance, Albedo number two, way out of range for me. No way I'm going to be able to afford that anytime soon. And expect to still have the locks working whenever I get home. All right, found this one. This was actually behind the counter, along with a few others that I'm going to get to. But I asked if I could see the stack behind the counter, and they didn't actually have a, they didn't actually have a price attached to it. And uh, they went and asked, and they said, "Oh, just two bucks," along with a few others. And you guys are going to shit whenever you see the other ones I got for two bucks. So yeah, I've always wanted to read Justice League Dark. Um, I don't, you know, I don't like collect the New Fifty Two anymore, but. Uh, I'd be interested in reading this one and, and maybe picking up a trade. Daddy! Alright. Next one I got here, Captain America number 193. Uh, found that in the bins. I'm really surprised uh, that we had this. and that That's a Jack Kirby cover. Um, it's got a little chip missing from the corner here. And uh, this is actually, for those of you who don't know, this is actually Kirby's second run on Captain America. So this is when he had left Marvel, went to DC, and then decided to come back to Marvel. So issues 193 and 2 to 214 of Captain America are Jack Kirby again, for those of you out there who are collecting him. So that is an awesome cover. This one I can't find anywhere. Uh, when I go and look it up on the database of Comic Book Realm, it, it, under uh, the Westerner, it doesn't give me this number. So we've got the Westerner number 16 under Super Comics, and when I look up Super Comics, they don't have a Westerner there. So I'm going to be digging for this one for a while. But I saw that was one of those old Western books that had a $2 price tag on it. Uh, the cover's in rough shape, but I looked at the insides, and they're really nice. Colors are great and vibrant. The pages are mostly white with some tinging to them. I mean, what do you want? The book was from 1964, so it's going to have a little bit of yellowing, but I figured I'd uh, pick that one up. And it's got some writing on the inside, too. All right, saw this one in the bins, a classic Jimmy Olsen cover. Uh, Jimmy Olsen 111 with the Elastic Lad versus Ugly Superman. I just thought, I, I see that cover all the time. It pops up in my eBay feed all the time as a suggested book. So I saw it had a $3 price tag on it, and I had some trade-in money, so I picked it up. Okay, so here are the other three that I found behind the counter, and like I said, you guys are going to shit whenever I tell you uh, how this works. So I, I said, you know, they said, oh, those three are $2 books, and then they looked up the last one, they were like, I'll give it to you for five. And I thought, well, they're going to look it up, oh, they're going to go take it. So let's take it to our comic guy in the store. Yeah, the comic guy, he basically, <laughs> I don't think he was a real comic guy. So uh, I, got, I think I hit the lottery here. So let's start with number one. That is Wolverine number one. First appearance of Wolverine is Patch. That's a new stand edition. Spine's in great shape, probably about a 9-2 because there's some ticks in here. The corners are great. The insides are bright colored. $2. I had a crappier version of this book that I sold. Now I am pleased to have a better copy that I pay less for than the one that I sold <laughs> back in my hands. So happy about that. Number two. Punisher number one with the Klaus Janssen cover. This book has skyrocketed in value over the last year, ever since Punisher's made his made a, a good well, I mean, I was a fan of Thomas Jane and his Punisher and everything, but they made a good solid Punisher appearance and character development with John Bernthal in the Daredevil series. So uh, this book on Comic Book Realm, they have this book at near mint 9.4 at 50 bucks. I think that might be a little over over uh, graded, if you ask me, or overpriced. Uh, it's probably a thirty dollar book. I've owned this book three times. I've sold it twice. This is my third time, and I regretted selling it the second time. And now I'm going to keep it because I only paid two bucks for it. So happy with that. Book's in perfect shape, and uh, gonna add it back to my collection. All right, now the last one. This was the one they said it was going to be, they said, oh, we'll give it to you for $5 because it's probably very fine. I looked it over. It's probably very fine plus at an 8.5 at the very worst. And uh, I could not believe they have this there. It was in that stack behind the counter. What if number one, volume one. So what if Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four? 
In that condition, that's probably a $40 book, and I got it for five bucks. So I have been looking. I love the what if stories. They're fun to read. Uh, I just picked up last month what if number two. What if Bruce the Hulk had Bruce Banner's mind? So now I've got number one to finally compliment that bookend, and uh, happy to to have it as a piece of my uh, collection here. So, all right, guys. Well, I appreciate you watching. Thanks for uh, you know tuning in all this time. I'm trying to get uh, some more subs here, so it looks like some of you guys have been jumping on and and uh, commenting and everything. So it's thank you, and uh, we'll see what the future holds. But all right, guys. Peace.